Let's continue with our algebra. Remember the first part on algebra is to test whether we can factorize. It forms the core of your mathematics. Factorization is the key. Look at the first problem. These are all past exam question papers. So it is exactly like you'll be seeing it in the exam paper. The first question that I want us to look at is x squared is equal to 5x minus 4. The question will of course be saying solve for x. Another thing that is important I want you to take note of if 2x plus 3 is equal to maybe anything, you are going to have one value of x because this x is to the power 1. Once you have x to the power 2, you are going to have two values of x, two roots. If this x is to the power 3, you are going to have three solutions. So that becomes important. You go there with an expectation that you are going to get two values of x because there is power 2. This is pushing you towards graphs. Remember these are quadratics. We refer to this as quadratic theory. It is, it is important that whatever you are given, you put it, put it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero first before you factorize in a quadratic form. All these will be quadratics in question one. Mainly you are dealing with quadratics, putting things into the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Make sure that all the time on the right hand side, you must have zero. Look at this one. Is it arranged in this form? Look at it. Is it arranged in this form? Remember, on the right hand side, you must always have zero. This is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. Is this zero? No, let us arrange it. We have x squared. Take this five this side, it will be minus five x. And for this side, it will be plus four. This is equal to zero. Ah, it is the form, it is now in the form that you wanted in the form of a x squared plus b x plus c. And you can tell what is a there, it is one. What is b, it is minus five. And what is c in this particular case, it is four. Once it is in that form, you can factorize. Remember, the maths will play a key role as well. If three, four, once it goes to five marks and it says correct it to the small place, it will be another topic, the quadratic formula. Importantly, make sure that you have got a zero on the right hand side. Put it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. It is in that form, let us factorize. You'll find factors. Don't rush into quadratic formula. Don't be lazy to factorize. You need to factorize. Open two sets of brackets equals to zero on the right hand side. Remember, when you multiply in these brackets, you must get that one exactly as it is. The first one is x squared. How do you find x squared? You say x times x. Bra bracket means times. Ah, now we've got this x squared. x times x is x squared. Usually the most difficult one is the middle term. Look at that term, it's four. We have four now. We want factors of four that will give us five. Let us write the factors of four. Factors of four are two times two. Any other factors of four? Yes, it is four times one. These are factors of four. The first ones and the second ones. They are factors of four. Now you look at these factors of four, you want the factors of the third term, of the constant term, to give us five. Not just five, but negative five. How can we get five out of this? Which one can give us five? When you add them or when you subtract them. When I add this, I will never get five. But four plus one, I can't get five from four and one. So those are the factors that we are going to use, four and one. But they must give us O minus five when you add them or when you subtract them. So if I make this negative and this negative and I add them together, they will give me O minus five, which is exactly what I need there. So you don't just pick any factors. You pick factors that will give you the middle term when you add them or when you subtract them. In this particular case, the factors of 4 that can give us 5 is 4 and 1, and both 4 and 1 must be negative for us to get minus 5. That becomes crucial. We use the trial and error method to find these factors. So the other factors will then be 4 and 1. Remember the 4 and 1, both of them must be negative. Remember, when I add them, I must get minus 5. At the same time, when I multiply them, when I multiply this and this, I must get that term there, the constant term, which is 4. Negative 4 times uh, negative 1. It does give us negative four, positive 4. Negative and negative give us positive. Ah, we won. Half the battle is won. Remember, we're multiplying here. We're multiplying two numbers, we're getting 0. 
When you multiply a certain number times a certain number and you get zero, definitely one of these numbers must be zero. Because zero multiplied by anything, it gives you zero. So when you multiply this one and that one, you're getting zero. So this one can be zero or that one can be zero. That's where the all comes from. Either of the two can be zero. Because if you multiply anything by zero, you get zero. So we are then saying x minus 4 can be zero or x minus 1 can be zero. Then you solve for x. So x in this particular case will be, take it that side, it will be positive 4 or x is equal to uh, positive 1. This is our solution. This is x to the power 2. How many solutions do I expect? 2. Did I get 2 solutions? Yes, 1, 2. So this is how you go about uh, 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 factorizing. Now I want us to look at the second one. You don't always, it can't be the subject in any way. The problem can be disrupted in any way. The key here is to put it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. On the, I'm emphasizing one and the same thing. On the right hand side, you must always have zero. This is done in grade nine, but it comes out in grade 12. So these are guaranteed marks. So make sure that in Fundeka you get these maximum marks. Let's look at the second one. You've got three x plus 1 over x equals to 4. At the back of my mind, I'm starting my paper, I know that I'm expecting to have it in this form, in a quadratic form. And they've thrown in a fraction. We, they, we know that you struggle with fractions, but don't struggle anymore. Get rid of the fraction and move on with the problem. How do, what, what makes this difficult? It is just this fraction that is over there. That fraction makes it difficult for us to solve it. If we can deal with this x, then we'll be able to move forward. How do I get rid of that x? I multiply by x here, yeah, so that that x can uh, uh, be divided by that and have 1. If, if you have a seesaw, if this is balanced, if you put a person who is uh, five, five, 5 kg heavier, if you want to balance this, you've got to put another 5 person who is 5 kg heavier for your, for, 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 for your equation to balance. It is exactly the same thing here in mathematics as well. Uh, if I multiply by x in that one, I've got to multiply everything by x, everything by x, even on this one, for it to balance, for it to still do, to be equal. What you do on one, you must do on all three terms in that particular case. Once you do that, why are we doing that? We're trying to get rid of this, of this x, which is a fraction. Let's move on. What do we have now? 3x times x, it's 3x squared, right? Uh, let's look at this one. I know that I've got to have ax squared, then followed by bx, then the constant. In this particular case, this and that will give us 1, 1 over 1 will be 1, so this will be a constant term. It should be at the end. So I'm not going to write it here because I know what I'm doing. This 4 times x, it should, ax squared, it must be followed by bx, bx. So this is the one with bx, so I bring it this side, it should be minus 4x. Then, of course, my constant term 1, we have 0 on the other side. This is the state that we wanted. We wanted it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Now it is in that form. What do we do after this? You don't have to jump into quadratic formula. We are being tested here. Can you factorize? Not quadratic formula yet. Let's look at this one. Let us try and factorize it. I discourage learners from rushing into quadratic formula because you'll be missing the factorization skill. Let's do this thing. You open two sets of brackets. Of course, if you don't find factors, then you can go and, uh, and, and actually use a quadratic formula. Factors of 3x squared, it can be 3x and x. Ah, factors of 1, they are very easy. 1 and 1. Remember that you need to get this middle term, which is minus 4x. Let's work it out. This times that. You use your foil. First term, first term by the first term, it will be 20, 3x squared. First term and the second term, it will be 3x. This and that, it will be another x. Can we get 4x out of this? Minus 4x. So both of them must be negative if I want to add them so that I'll be getting minus 4x. Ah, very easy. So I sh there's nothing that should be pushing me towards the, 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 the quadratic formula. 
I must not shy away from finding factors, exactly as I've shown you. Right. I know that where I got minus 3, when I got 3x, it should be negative, and where I got x, it should also be negative. Let's push in our signs. Uh, this is where we get 3x this times that. If I multiply these two, I must get minus 3x. So it means one of them must be negative. Since 3 is positive, then 1 must be negative. That's the first one. Let's look at the next one. Uh, the x. So if I multiply this and that, these two, I must get what? I must get minus x. So how do I get that one? This one is already positive, so this one must be negative. At the same time, negative 1 times negative 1 must give me the third term in this particular case, which is positive 1. So our factors are correct, and they give us exactly what we want. Let's continue. We've got two. In fact, when we multiply this and that, I get 0. So one of them must be 0. So it can be 3x minus 1, which is 0, or it can be x minus 1, which is 0. So 3x is equals to 1, take two on the side, it's positive, or x is equals to 1, positive as well. Remember, we're not looking for 3x, we're looking for x. You divide by 3 on both sides. If I divide this by 3, I'll be left with x. I'll be left with x equals to 1 out of 3, or x is equals to 1. Yes, I've got two solutions because my x it is to the power 2. Thank you.